I said it in the last uh, video, the YouTube short that I posted on this wine. This could change your life. Welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And uh, today we're taking a ride to Spain. I guess a, f a flight to Spain. Maybe we're doing a visit to Spain. Today we are tasting the Albarino Lorero blend from the Santiago Ruiz winery uh, in the Rio Spices region of Spain. And this is a 2020 uh, vintage. So let's talk. We got a lot to cover here. A lot to cover. First off, this bottle. Um, I know what I'm getting, right? Uh, this is the second time we've had the bottle in the house and we have purchased uh, pl uh, several more because we like it so much and you know, who can, you can never have enough corkscrews. Um, so normally when you're drinking Albarino wines, they're, I, I, I think they're akin to Sauvignon Blanc wines, right? Punchy, um, can be sharp, they're bright, they're aromatic, right? You're gonna, you'll, you'll smell the fruit jumping out of the glass. And you know they're going to be tart. They're going to they're going to they're for the right um, person, right? There are some people who can't stand wines like that, and those wines have to be, you know, a little more calm and round and fuller, right? So this wine, because of the addition of the Lorero grape, and in this case, and also a small proportion of Trechadura, uh, what happens to the Albarino wine is it goes from being this really punchy, sharp. Uh, you know, bright wine to something that is toned down, but has all the has all the characteristics of an Albarino that you love. Now, if you don't love Albarinos yet, you got to get out and try them because they're really I mean, perfect for a Sauvignon Blanc alternative. And I tend to prefer Albarinos a lot of times uh, to a Sauvignon Blanc. In this case, there was a uh, I was looking for. Uh, what was it? I was technically looking for a Godeo wine, which is another white wine from Spain. Uh, and at my local wine shop, Bin 312 in Providence, which is my favorite shop, the, the woman there said, well, if you're looking for a Godeo, why don't you try this one? And I took, so if you picture me taking this off the shelf, right? I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. She's like, I like, and you even get a corkscrew. She's like, yes. And what's even cooler about it is the, the owner wanted to put uh, some sort of a map on the, the label and just couldn't find something that he liked. Um, and oddly enough, his daughter drew this map up and they, he liked it so much it became the label for the bottle. So what's not to love? Even, this, even, the, if, even if this wine was awful, like I feel like it's a great story. I still would have felt fine. You know, I got to... I, I spent some money on the wine, I hated it, okay, but I ended up with a corkscrew and the story with this, with this drawing of, the, of the, the region on it, it's great. But the wine in the bottle is awesome. It's really good and I think it can be, like I said, it, 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 it appeals to Sauvignon Blanc drinkers and Chardonnay drinkers. But let's, let, let me try to give you a better sense for what this brings to the table. And so immediately you get that, you get this, there's citrus notes up front, beautiful. I'll call it a lemon, but there's, it's almost a little bit of a, um, I don't wanna say preserved lemon, but there's an herbal quality here. Not quite um, a Meyer lemon. And the only reason I say not quite a Meyer lemon is if I'm an expert on Meyer lemons is because I literally just had some Meyer lemon in my water a couple of days ago. And I realized that it's, um, it's a lemon that has like some herbal notes in it. So it's almost like what I'm smelling here, except this smells more like your traditional lemon with like a little flick of an herb in there. There's a, it's, it has a, a, some notes of like crushed rocks, crushed rocks on like a warm day. So there's a heat coming up off of the, off of the crushed rocks. Stay with me, folks. I also get um, a little bit of banana in here, the more you swirl it, the more that sort of sweeter note comes out. So there's still lemons in there, but there's a banana note to it. So 
you know, I just, I just kind of gave you an, a really neat melange of flavors there. So I, I can't see this being a bad idea. Let's give it a taste. It's just so tasty. You know, that citrus is there. There's plenty of acid. This would be great with any sort of seafood. It'd be great to just start a meal. Um, it'd be fantastic with a roasted chicken too because of the other grapes that sort of round it out. So um, I think in the end, you gotta go find this. Uh, it's fun. You get a great corkscrew and, uh, and the wine is just damn good. I hope you enjoyed this episode and my ridiculous ramblings at times. I'll see you soon next time. Cheers.